Hey, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be doing something a little special. I'm going to be talking and covering how to do retrospectives with hybrid teams. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, this video is not yet quite sponsored, so if you're interested in sponsoring, I still have a spot available for my Friday series. So make sure you get a hold of me. Let me know either in the comment section down below or get a hold of me on LinkedIn. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you. Let's jump into today's video. Now I mentioned that this video is going to be a little bit special and it's special in a couple of ways. One, we're going to be talking about Atlassian's team playbooks. Now Atlassian has a ton of playbooks where they basically eat their own dog food type of thing where they essentially model how they work as a team, as an organization. Then they put it in this playbook and open it up for the entire internet to utilize. Now, as you know, or may not know, Atlassian is a 100% like very, very remote friendly company and retrospectives are a part of everyday life. And so Atlassian has put together this playbook that essentially guides you to how they do their retrospectives. And I thought this was really interesting because I've been doing retrospectives for a really, really long time in a variety of different companies. And while there is a certain model to do it, in a hybrid world, things get kind of interesting. You have to model your retrospective in such a way that there's equality between the people that are at home and the people that are inside of a conference room. And so I'm really interested to find out what Atlassian recommends. And we're also going to look at a couple of other resources to make this hybrid type of retrospective a little bit easier and a little bit more fun. So let's take a look here. So first of all, this retrospective book is called 4Ls Retrospective. I am going to link all of this information and all the links we cover in the description below. So you make sure you go check that out. Now the 4Ls is a retrospective technique where team members identify what they loved, loaded, learned, and longed for in a project or a sprint of work. They're gonna basically walk us through how to do it. it, takes five minutes to prepare, 60 minutes to run it, and it's usually set for two to eight people. Now, if you've never used a playbook, which I haven't, this is literally the first time I've ever looked at the playbook, I recommend to you to go out there and look at what other playbooks they have because they have a lot of varieties and you might find something beneficial. And let me know in the comment section below if you do like this kind of video, because I actually would like to explore the other playbooks and see how we can learn from them and adapt them into our ways of Agile. So as I come down, they actually have a couple of examples. And this one right here is really interesting to me because this is essentially a physical board with sticky notes. And this is probably where we hit our first roadblock because when you have people inside of a conference room, this works really well. Everybody can see it, everybody can contribute to it, and it works just very collaboratively. But when you have folks on the other side of the camera, they really can't reach across the screen and put up a sticky note. So how can we use Confluence? How can we use tools and technologies to help us keep the equilibrium between the folks that are physically in a room and the folks that are all online digitally. And so while this concept of being able to have this quadrant is really, really cool, we're going to explore how to do this in Confluence, which makes this video related to what Ape Tech is all about. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a video conferencing with screen sharing, digital collaboration. We'll see the examples, mainly Confluence. And if you're in person, you're going to want a meeting space, a whiteboard, a large sheet of paper, markers, and sticky notes. Let me tell you, having not been in an office for over three years, I do miss the markers and stickies. And I just, I used to love doing and participating in retrospectives in person. So I actually, that is probably one of the only things that I really, really miss about being in an office. All right, so instructions for running this play. So a little bit of prep time. For a remote teams, start by creating a collaboration document, such as a Trello board or a Confluence page. And this is what I would recommend we do. So we're actually gonna go into Confluence and we're gonna set up the page itself. Um, you can use some of the templates provided if you like, or you create your own. Atlassian does provide two retrospective templates, the four L's and the regular retrospective. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've always, almost always have exclusively used just the retrospectives one, but today we're actually going to explore the four L's and see what that one's all about. 
for in-persons, you're gonna wanna have a whiteboard and set out some sticky notes. Now, this one's kind of a, the way I would approach it, right? So if you are a hybrid team, I would still embrace the whiteboardness of it, but I would also have Confluence open so that we can see what the team members are doing. And then, I know it's a little extra work, but I would take what's on that whiteboard and allow for that organic, in-person communication to happen and then just translate it into Confluence as well. That way, all the participants that are digitally can also benefit from having whatever's on that whiteboard. You're gonna create a few columns called milestones, love, load, uh, long for, learn, and actions. And then that's pretty much it. Now, setting the stage, you're gonna, for the next five minutes, you're gonna let the team know the following. The, the reason we're taking the time to talk about what we have worked on is to see how we can make improvements. We're coming into this meeting and understanding that everyone did the best that they could given their knowledge and tools. This meeting is a safe space, nothing is shared that will be used against anyone. And we're here to explore, not blame. Now, this right here is really, really interesting because if you've never participated in a retrospective, there's definitely wrong ways to do a retrospective. And you want to just make sure that, again, because we're in this hybrid type of environment, you don't want this to become a blame game. You do want this to be a very safe space. Uh, it should be an environment, whether physical or digital, where your team can collaborate and really address elephants in the room and be able to discuss in a very constructive way the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so just make sure that you do this correctly. Now, I do want to point out, I'm going to link this video down below. Atlassian here has in their blog post for work life, how to run a retrospective and have fun doing it. Highly recommend you check it out. But at the very, very bottom, they have a video that I just couldn't help noticing on the wrong way to do Agile. And this video was hilarious because it basically starts off with all the wrong things you would never want to do in a retrospective. For example, you start off by finding the scapegoat. Who are you going to put the blame because of the sprint not going well? And then you basically just point at that person. The other thing that they do is that they basically destroy all the documentation because you don't need to learn lessons from a retrospective. So there's a couple of really, really funny things in there. I highly recommend you give that video a watch as I, I find it really, really amusing. And I thought it was interesting that they, they played like a pretty good, um, I wouldn't call it a prank, but it, it was a really interesting video to see like all the wrong ways that you shouldn't do a retrospective because retrospectives have the tendency to have a pretty bad reputation. People tend to complain in them a lot. People tend to not have any trust and like really blame each other. And from a Scrum Master perspective, I think one of the biggest problems that we have when we do these retrospectives is that if, as we're taking actions on the things that should be improved, the things that can be better, the Scrum Master notes them down, but there's no follow through. There is no from sprint to sprint, a trail of actions that have been taken to make things better. And this is things that you just gotta watch out for. Like if your Scrum Master is not following through on these items, you as a Scrum Master need to do that. If there's a circle of trust is broken, like you as a Scrum Master should help and build that trust, do fun activities, which we're gonna talk about in a second, but you wanna create this culture where it's not complaining, it's not blaming, and it's not just a document or a session that we're gonna record and or just keep in confluence and never look back again. The retrospective is really designed to help your team become a high performance team. And so just wanna watch out for those things that are like, what Atlassian calls anti-patterns because they're not gonna be healthy. They're not gonna help you in your environment. So after you set the stage, some key moments here, right, is have the team think back over a chosen time period, which is typically the last sprint. What were the key events that occurred? Provide some examples, such as your goals met, your team celebrations, team members joining company events. Um, anchor the team in key milestones that jog the team's memory of events that occurred and how they felt about them. And then again, just really just a, a time to celebrate and figure out what was important, what was notable, what, what were we proud of from this sprint. After that, then comes all the reflections. What did you love? What about your work over that time period? This is what you want to keep on doing. Do a lot more of it in the future. What did you long for? What did you wish you had? It could be more people, more time, more coffee. Really just nothing's off the table, right? Just here you want your team. Like what are their wish lists? 
um, be creative here and pay special attention to what you're longing for. Because whether it's a physical thing or a digital thing, you should try to see if you can accommodate some of these things. Now, what did you loathe? Uh, what made life worse back then, right? What would you hope will never happen again? This is really hard to do sometimes because you have to be very vulnerable. You have to be willing to talk about the things that didn't go right at all. Now, fortunately, because we're in this hybrid world, I think we're at a position. I think after three years of doing this life, I think people are free to speak up whether in they're in the room or not. But the one thing I'll caution you is when you're doing this and you are talking about these very sensitive topics, make sure everybody's being respectful. Make sure that the people that are digital are getting enough attention. The people that are in the room are not being overly rude or cutting off the people on the phone because I've been in this situation many times. I've actually done quite a few retrospectives where we had players over on the phone and it just becomes hard because you can't anticipate when they're going to talk. So make sure videos are on, make sure cameras are on so that you can at least kind of anticipate when somebody's going to speak and just everybody be very, very respectful of the fact that somebody's talking and give them the, the attention that they, uh, at least the platform there that they deserve for that second or two. Now, what did we learn? This is probably, I think, my favorite part, which is what did we learn and what are our successes and our mistakes? Set up a 10 minute timer so that everybody adds to the list. And so, yeah, so that's basically all you do for 10 minutes and then you decide what to do. So now you give everyone 10 minutes as a team or in breakout groups and discuss, right? So one action you'll take to remove something from your load list. One action is you'll take something to amplify something from your love list and use your longed for and learned list to help shape your ideas of what actions to take. Now, this is interesting. I've done so many retrospectives, but I've never spun it in this perspective. So it's really interesting that Usually it was just assumed that everything that's on that list is becomes what we actually do, but it's interesting to just take an action, right? As opposed to kind of get the team to vote on what's most important to them now that they kind of are an open book and they've seen everything on the stage. So I really, really like that. And then the sixth step here is give each person in your group a few minutes to share their plan. Use action list to capture each action. Make sure to include who will do it, what they're doing, and by when. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Confluence as well because Confluence is going to play a key role in being able to do these things. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up. You're going to basically publish your meeting and, and that's it. And then so your follow-up is schedule the next ones and you're going to be coming back. So before we go that far though, right, before we actually jump into Confluence though, I've already linked and talked about this one, so we'll leave that there. But what I want you to look at is there's thir I'm going to link these four links here, these this, things that I've covered, but these 13 sprint retrospective games for remote and hybrid teams, before you even go into Confluence, before we even get started, I highly recommend that you do these games so you can get to know each other better, learn about each other's strengths and weaknesses, collaborate in circumstances different than your day-to-day -day work, build psychological safety, and most importantly, have some fun together. So I highly recommend you try these out. I think these are really, really good. And you can do a lot of these in like tool like Miro or try to see if you can do them inside of like Confluence, but it really, really does help your team's dynamic. I think this is really, really important. And I haven't actually tried for these first couple of them, but these rest assured that these are going to be something that I'm going to try to implement in my teams because this is the best part I think about the entire retrospective outside of the lessons learned and things like that. But really putting your guard down and just doing something fun, something that is exciting, that is interesting, that your team can really not worry about work for five minutes, right? And just still come together as a team and build a bond and some trust so that when we do have to talk about the hard things, that becomes a lot easier. So again, I'm going to link all this stuff down below so you can check them out. And in the comment section, let me know if you tried any of these. I think these are really, really interesting and I'm really, really excited to try some of these out with my teams. Okay, so when you're inside of Confluence, all you gotta do is hit the create button. And over here on the right hand side, I'm gonna type in retrospective. I'm just gonna put retro. And here's that retrospective that I mentioned earlier. I've done videos on this one. That retrospective is a tried and true one. It's the one I've been using since 2016. But today, we're gonna click on the four L's one. And the reason I'm doing this is because this one actually aligns with that playbook that we were discussing just a few minutes ago. So give this one a go, fill out the, give it a title, fill out who's there, and then just go to town. Just have everybody contribute and essentially add to this list everything that we just discussed and, 
and what they liked, what they their wish list, things that didn't go well, lessons that they learned, and then create these actions, right? So down here, all you gotta do is hit Shift Two, write down the action. This is an action, and then tag somebody. So you do Shift Two, and you can basically tag anybody in your team. And then if you type slash slash, you can hit date, and then you can assign it a date. And, and that's going to be it. That's that's really all you got to do there. And when you hit the publish page, it's automatically going to send out an email to the right person. And then you're going to have this really nice retrospective page that basically followed Atlassian's 4Ls playbook. Now, I'm not sure if you enjoyed this kind of video. If you did, do let me know with a thumbs up. And if you have any ideas, comments, questions, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know, are you doing retrospectives? Do you enjoy your retrospectives? Do you hate doing retrospectives? I want to know your opinions. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This video is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series, and we are trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. So every subscription to this channel will count. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and share it with all your friends, coworkers, team, peers, everybody that you know, so that more and more people can get access to these super, super valuable videos. So I hope you did enjoy this one. And if you're looking for a place to sponsor and to get access to thousands and thousands of people that watch these videos, let me know, reach out to me on LinkedIn. All my information is in the link in the description down below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need